This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is a mobile workstation, right? Boy, times have certainly changed for the better. Used to be mobile workstations are those thick, clunky, monstrous beasts that were powerful, but nowhere near portable. So this is the Lenovo ThinkPad P1, the P series is their workstation line. And it's exactly the same with one difference, the graphics card, as the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Extreme that we reviewed several months ago, which is why, sorry, it took me a while to get to this, because they are similar. Identical chassis. We're not talking close cousins. We're talking the same chassis. But still, for the mobile workstation crowd, the important change here is the NVIDIA Quadra cord card instead of NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050 Ti Max-Q that's in the X1 Extreme. So you know who you are if you need a Quadra card. That's the way I like to put it these days. It's for people who are doing solid work. They're doing CAD work. They need those certified drivers sort of thing. It's fine for video editing too. It's actually decent for gaming. It shares a lot, in fact with the GTX 1050 Max-Q if you're talking about the NVIDIA P2000 Max-Q. Yes, there are Max-Qs for NVIDIA Quadro cars now inside. Anyway, there's more to learn. We're going to look at it now. So this is a darling of a mobile workstation because it is so thin and so light, about 1.7 kilograms, which is starting weight of about 3.76 pounds. It has the things you would expect from a, a ThinkPad laptop, a keyboard that's just superb to die for, an excellent trackpad, and some good display options that we'll talk about, which again are the same as the ThinkPad X1 Extremes as well. But what's so special about this is how thin, light, and sexy, if you're a ThinkPad person, it is. Lenovo did have the P52S, which is the slim version of the P52 workstation, but the drawback there, and I was wondering who is that exactly for, was the fact that that one is using Ultrabook quad-core 15 watt CPUs. This is using the latest Intel 8th generation 6-core 45 watt CPUs. You've got a Core i5 option, you have a Core i7, which is only like $30 more, so just get the Core i7, right? Two different ones, the usual 8750H that's in every mobile workstation and gaming laptop, or you can move up to the 8850H, which is a little faster clock speed and for some reason it's a couple hundred dollars more expensive. You're going to have to get that CPU upgrade though if you want to go from the NVIDIA Quadro P1000 card to the P2000 Max-Q card. Both have four gigs of VRAM by the way. And if you are using this for CAD and graphics and video editing, believe me, you do want to do that upgrade. So that's kind of one of those things Lenovo does. They tie the CPU and the GPU together to kind of make you spend more money. But even more amazing is the fact that you can get this with an Intel Xeon processor, also six core, latest generation inside. So for something this thin and that, this light, it's unheard of. This is the first time I would say that Lenovo has really made a thin and light mobile workstation that has the horsepower of something thicker. So, something has got to give here, right? Well, it's not the displays. You have your choice of a very competent 1080p display or the 4K UHD display we have, which has very wide color gamut. It has 100% of Adobe RGB, which is a lot harder to cover than the usual sRGB, which is also 100% plus in terms of coverage. Superb display. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. So what are the gotchas then? Well, price, this is expensive. Lenovo's P-series workstations are companies usually buy them, not individuals, so some of you might buy it. So this thing is darn expensive. It starts around $1,600-ish, just like the ThinkPad X1 Extreme, and it goes up from there. And particularly if you're bundling in that faster CPU to get the better GPU, a nice configuration with the Core i7, the NVIDIA P2000 Quadro card, a 4K display, 16 gigs of RAM, and a 512 gig NVMe SSD is going to cost you between $2,750 and $2,900. Ours is maxed out. It goes up to a 2 terabyte SSD availability, and that's what we have. We have 32 gigs of RAM. We have everything that you want except for the Xeon processor, and that's like $3,500. The other gotcha could be heat and noise. We've seen this before, the Dell XPS 15. is the thermal challenge to put this much horsepower in something this thin. There's a reason why gaming laptops and mobile workstations are typically thicker. Lenovo has done a pretty good job with that. Again, it's the same as the ThinkPad X1 Extreme, right down to the fans and the heat sinks. So you have two fans, you have two heat pipes, and they're not very big, but somehow they managed to keep it all under control. The core temperatures on this one, doing something heavy duty like doing benchmarking, for example, or exporting video, or doing some rendering, are actually quite good on it. Uh, typically in the 
80s centigrade, where 100 allowable is maximum. We've seen a lot of gaming laptops that'll go close to 100 and throttle back. This one's using the BIOS. It's pretty obvious when we look at the PC Mark 10 graph. It's not maintaining a solid turbo boost, that flat line at the top at 4.2 gigahertz or better. Uh, you see the seesawing, but still, the end result in terms of benchmarks, in terms of video export times, in terms of rendering times, is just fine. It's fast enough. So I think they did a good balance there when it comes to the heat and the noise. You, you will hear the fans if you're pushing it hard, make no mistake, and occasionally they'll come on even if you're doing everyday stuff, though not, not too, too much, but they're not very loud fans, they're not very huge fans, so you'll hear them but they will not fill the room with noise and drown out the TV or somebody else who's in the boardroom with you. Inside we have two RAM slots, so that used to mean a maximum of 32 gigs of RAM, and that's DDR4 2666 megahertz RAM, but nowadays if you have the money and you can find them, they're still pretty hard to find, there are 32 gig modules, this is compatible, so that means you could go up to 64 gigs. There are two M.2 SSD slots for NVMe drives, just like the X1 Extreme, again, so that's pretty unusual. You don't usually see more than one M.2 slot, so you really can go crazy with the storage. Like I said, we already have the two terabyte option, which is expensive enough, though not nearly as much as Apple would charge for that upgrade, but you can put a second drive in there if you want, so sometimes it's cheaper to do it that way instead of getting one giant capacity drive. We have an Intel 9560 AC Wi-Fi, the usual excellent Wi-Fi card and board that is socketed as well. Ports on this are good. You would expect it's a fairly roomy chassis, at least in terms of dimensions. So you've got USB type A 3.1 ports. You've got two of those. You have two Thunderbolt 3 full four lane on board. You have the Lenovo charging port. This uses 135 watts for charging. So it's kind of pushing the limit of Thunderbolt 3 for charging but you can do it, but it might not really charge very fast if you try to use the Thunderbolt 3. We have a full-size SD card slot. We have HDMI 2.0. If you need DisplayPort, that's what your USB-C slash Thunderbolt 3 ports are for. They're still, I don't know why they bother with this anymore, but they still have their proprietary dongle adapter for Ethernet if you want to go that way instead of using the USB-C port for that. So pretty well set up, obviously a 3.5 millimeter audio jacks on board and some pretty good speakers. Lenovo ThinkPads have fairly loud and full speakers. It's nice enough to listen to. And you can have some fun when you're not doing your high-end CAD stuff and your color accurate work if you get that 4K display. The only bad news is that's like three, four hundred dollars more. It's an expensive upgrade this time around, but it is a display to die for. It, Lenovo rates that at 400 nits. It's 300 nits for the 1080p display, according to them. We measured it at about 359 nits or so, so it didn't quite hit that 400 nits, but that's pretty darn bright. The gamut on this is amazing. The factory calibration was better than the ThinkPad X1 Extreme. Might just be luck of the draw, might be there really are calibrating a little bit better. Still benefited from the calibration. The display was the usual kind of too cool and calibrated up. But the color accuracy you can see on screen where lower bars, lower numbers are better is really very good on this. So as a professional level display is something that competes with HP Dream Color and the Dell XPS's lovely 4K display. Lenovo has done a good job with that. It's got a fingerprint scanner on board and an optional Windows Hello IR camera, the usual TPM 2.0. And in terms of ruggedness and durability and rigidity, man, this thing feels rigid. You cannot twist it, you cannot bend it, and it passes the usual mill spec standards that ThinkPads do for durability and dust and moisture and all that sort of thing. Keyboard here, there's not much to say because it's ThinkPad at their best. It, wonderful, nice key travel, good damping feel, not overly firm, not mushy, smile-shaped ergonomic keys, two-stage backlighting, use the FN and the spacebar to activate that. It's a wonderful typing experience. The only thing that you might be missing is if you really want a number pad on your keyboard. You're not getting that here. Trackpads also excellent. I have no complaints about Lenovo trackpads, generally speaking, and this time they're using Microsoft Precision drivers instead of their highly customized driver, which is probably done by Synaptics. I don't know. Anyway, the trackpad on this feels wonderful too. That trackpad is buttonless, which means you press it down to click on it, but for the track point that we also have, that little red nubbin up there, you have dedicated buttons up above the trackpad. Again, like the ThinkPad X1 Extreme, this supports the active Lenovo ThinkPad pen right here. 4,096 pressure levels. This does not support tilt. It has a basic pen control panel. You can assign the two buttons on the side to a couple of different functions here. I like this feature here where you can show the battery status in the taskbar. This takes a removable quadruple A battery, so it's good to keep track of it, even though the battery should last about a year, depending on, well, 
how much you do. And you have pen tip sensitivity adjustments here. Like most Wacom AES digitizers, I like it pretty well. The palm rejection on is pretty good. The ink is nice and flowing. Diagonal line jitter is pretty good actually for diagonal line jitter. Some of that is actually my hand moving. It's it's not too bad there. And you know, of course, up and down lines and fast lines are just fine on this. It's, certainly it's up to the task for doing things that is intended to do. That is working on your 3D models, whatever it is, doing some artwork. If you're doing rendering work, you get the idea. To get inside, it's really easy. Just unscrew seven captive Phillips head screws, pop off the bottom cover, and here it is. Here's your 80 watt hour battery. That is your Wi-Fi card right there. This is your spare M.2 slot if you want to have two SSDs inside. This is the main one. Again, we have a two terabyte Samsung. It's a PM981, the latest, greatest, and fastest drive. Obviously, we've got two fans right here. Here's our little heat pipes and our heat sinks underneath. If you wish to repaste this, you could. It seems to me like they've done a pretty decent job with repasting it, but hey. And last but not least, we have our two RAM slots under the Mylar covers. Now, again, we have 32 gigs of RAM, and we have that very rare, still 32 gig and very expensive module. You can order this with matching RAM in each slot if you want to get dual channel from the factory, or you can get it with a single module in case you're thinking about upgrading yourself afterwards, and you'll buy the matching mod module yourself. Again, just like the ThinkPad X1 Extreme, because it's basically the same machine, you have an 80 watt hour battery, and it ships with the same 135 watt charger. That's the okay capacity battery. It's decent. It's not class leading. It's not the maximum 99 watt hours that Dell will do in some of their machines. But battery life on this obviously is going to depend on what you're doing. If you're doing SolidWorks unplugged on the go, then your battery life is going to be shorter than if you're sitting there streaming Netflix or typing in a Word document. But for average productivity business kind of use and a little streaming video and a little bit of Photoshop, which is our typical test with brightness set to 150 nits, it ran about six and a half hours. I did notice that the Quadro card seems to be slightly more powerful than the NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti card, and also it runs just slightly cooler. Now that gets down to which do you choose, then, the X1 Extreme or the P1? And I have to say that you know who you are, again, if you need that Quadro card. For your average consumer or business person who wants to maybe even game a little bit, the GTX 1050 Ti makes the most sense. And you can save about $200 by going that route because you're not forced into buying the higher end CPU just to get the better GPU like you are with the P1. Um, the, the P1 is decent for gaming actually. It's still an NVIDIA card. There's a lot of architectural similarities. Performance in terms of gaming, a couple of frames per second less, a little slightly bit lower clock speed on it. Uh, yeah, I think you get the idea. If you, if you live in SolidWorks, it's the P1. If you certainly never going to do that kind of thing and for video editing and you know, all that sort of thing that regular people do, a little bit of gaming, then the X1 Extreme would make more sense. So that's the Lenovo ThinkPad P1 mobile workstation. Hard to believe, again, that this is a mobile workstation. And it's phenomenal stuff. They've done a good job, just like they did with the ThinkPad X1 Extreme. Of course, the price tag is pretty much not for consumers. This is a business-grade price tag, probably even more than the X1 Extreme, which I think goes on sale more aggressively more often than the P-Series. But hey, if work is buying this for you, be happy. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this video.